Hope everybody's okay, healthy, well. Uh, Stacy, hi there. All right, Missouri's checking in. This is good. Hi, Stacy. Hello. Welcome. Thank welcome, you. Welcome, welcome. This is you great. You guys can't see me, can you? Uh, I saw you when you signed on, but I don't know. I, I can only see a few people at a time, so okay, I good. can't see everybody. I was operating under the belief that I would not be visible. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you so are. I, that's okay. <laughs> I am? Okay, well. You know, we, we're, we're all operating life. under that these days. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, Suzanne. All right. Kristen. All right. Great. Wonderful. Super. Okay. Thought people would keep connecting. All right. So, um, so I wanted to start by saying also, besides welcome and welcome as you are all joining, Melinda. Hi there. Pleasure to see, pleasure to see everybody. Um, that um, I wanted to start with a a, a recognition that. Uh, I have interfered with some people's second Seder night, and so it prompted me to want to say happy Easter, happy Passover, happy anything that you might be celebrating or that you might think about celebrating or that you don't want to celebrate, whatever it might be. Um, I, um, I, I, I am so glad that you're here, and I'm so glad that we could take a little time to, to talk about how to carpe the chaos together. Uh, this morning, I, I got a newsletter from a friend of mine. Um, you know, my phone keeps recording everything I'm saying, even though I turn off the recorder. I don't know why that is. But anyway, oh my goodness gracious. Uh, from my friend Anika Rahman, quoting the novelist Arundhati Roy, historically pandemics have forced humans to break with the past and imagine their world anew. This one is no different. It is a portal. I love that a gateway between one world and the next. We can choose to walk through it, dragging out the carcasses of our prejudice and hatred, our avarice, our data banks and dead ideas, our dead rivers and smoky skies behind us. Or we can walk through lightly with little luggage, ready to imagine another world and ready to fight for it. So I love that. And I uh, just wanted to share that with you as we get started. Um, I think the other thing that I wanted to do before we get started is that I was just acutely aware as I was taking my morning walk today uh, that, uh, that I wanted to just take a minute for us to, to honor all of the frontline workers who are, are helping us stay healthy and alive, the healthcare workers, the nurses, the doctors, the, all of the people who are providing, uh, when we go to the grocery store, they're there. There are so many people who are helping all of us try to lead as normal a lives as possible. So I wanted to to acknowledge that. And uh, and if I if you agree with me, just show me a hand. Just raise a hand here for for I think I think everybody's feeling that way and feeling that appreciation. Um, oh, hmm. Okay. Let me try something else. There we go. So who knows what this is? The phoenix bird, the phoenix bird. So um, um, as we go through this portal, I'm betting on us, I'm betting on us the, with our human capital that we will, we will definitely um, rise again like the phoenix bird. That's, our, that's going to be our choice. But meanwhile, we are in the midst of a whole heck of a lot of chaos. And uh, I'm gonna guess that each and every person here is feeling a lot of it. And um, so I wanted to start with a, a question. Oh, but before I get to the question, oh yes. Before I get to the question, I always start with the slide, which is, you know, tweet us, Facebook us, LinkedIn us, Instagram us, because the more we can get the word out, the better. So feel free to be, be doing that as we're going along here. That always helps us to let the world know about what we do. Um, so 
How many of you are fans of the Big Bang Theory? Any Big Bang Theory fans out there? So then if you are, you know what this couch is. And you know what that means, that it's there's the spot, that Sheldon has his spot on that couch. And if anybody else sits on that couch, even if he doesn't see them, when he sits on the couch, he knows somebody has sat in his spot and it is completely disorienting to him. He, it, he, he, it just, it just, and just completely tears up his entire universe. Um, personally, I have a spot in my Pilates class back in the good old days when I could go to an in-person Pilates class. I have a particular spot and I usually get there early to get my spot. And I have had that spot for so long that now every, and in fact, I think I must give people the side eye when I don't get my spot. So when I, I'm telling you, I can walk in late to the class and that spot will still be there because people know that's my spot. It's my spot. And if I don't have that spot, my day is all wrong. So I wanted you just kind of, you know, we all have our spot. We all have our spot. And so I wanted to just start with the question of what, the, the problem with this is that I think I can't see if that's, is, is, is this covering up part of the screen for you? Can you just, somebody just unmute yourself and tell me if the screen is, you can, you can see the screen, the whole screen. Is it okay? Yes, can see the whole yeah. screen. Okay, all right. I think good. so, one okay. to five. Okay, all right, very good. So. We've all got our spot. So I want you to just start with the question of when your spot is taken by somebody or when, you're, when you are in chaos, when something is disrupted in your life, which of these responses most accurately reflects how you react? Are you a one, you love to create chaos and then run away? Are you a two, you embrace chaos to advance new ideas and achieve your goals? Are you a three, it stresses me out, but I calm myself and press on? Do you hide under your desk until it passes? Or do you put your head in the sand and pretend it isn't happening at all? So um, just, uh, if you'll go to the chat, does everybody know where the chat is? Can you show the chat, Christina? make sure everybody knows where the chat is can just go to the chat and share with us where which one of these numbers reflects you and if you're willing to share why that would be really great too so i'm going to give a minute for you all to do that just go to the chat which of these best describes you and why if you're willing to share the why Take a minute to share that and um, and then I'll have Christina give us a little rundown. Ooh, so we have a lot of people who've, who've shared. Christina, you wanna tell us what's there? What people are saying? Because I can't see it. Okay, <laughs> we have a lot of threes. Lisa, Christy, Suzanne, we have a lot of threes. Um, we have somewhere between a two and a three. Uh, let's see, we, we have twos. Stacy said she's a two, but only after freaking out a little bit first. <laughs> um, somebody said, I've learned to take a deep breath and go on. Uh, the show must go on. The show must go on. The show must go on. Yes. Ultimately, that is exactly right. Ultimately, the show must go on. Ultimately, um, that's our, that's basically, that is basically our choice. That is basically human life, right? The show must go on. Or, or maybe what I should say is the show does go on. The show does go on. And we can either help guide where the show is going or not. And how different does it feel if we're if we're feeling like we've got a sense of control over it? So really, what this web chat is about is um, we will talk about any questions you want to talk about. We've already got a couple of questions that have come in, but if you want to ask a question at any time, just um, 
you can put it into the chat and Christina will be watching the chat. You can unmute, you can raise your hand physically and or use the raise hand thing. And Christina will be watching and 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 we'll we'll just stop and, and talk about that. Um, does that sound okay? Is that all right with everybody? Is that good? Okay. Because you know, all of these web chats, they're just a little bit, this is like um, it's very informal. It's very informal. <clears throat> this is meant to be a, a conversation, not a not a teaching. So if I just start off on my usual teaching thing, you can you can get on my case. It's okay. Um, because what I really want to do is to discuss your questions and concerns. Um, as we go along, um, whatever your response is to chaos, I, I want to see if if maybe some of my own experiences can help you reframe chaos a little bit so that it becomes a positive for you and you can take the energy and use it as a resource and an opportunity to help you move yourself forward to your goals even in these challenging times and not be frozen as we sometimes can be. I know there are days that I wake up and I'm like, I just, I can't, I can't, I just can't. But you know what? If I can reframe it, if I can think about it as an opportunity, then it becomes something completely different. Um, there, there are a lot of definitions of chaos. There's the, the academic definition of chaos. There, I, I aggregated a whole bunch of dictionary definitions of chaos here. Um, but as I, have, as I have experienced chaos so often in the work that I've done over the years, um, I've come to see chaos as primarily being energy. And if I can think of it as being energy, then energy is always something that I can turn into some kind of an opportunity, even if I don't see it at the beginning. Um, it, 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 if, if, I can, if I can recognize that a lot of what is chaos, of that confusion, the disorder, the what seems like a big mess, is also a moment in time when boundaries are malleable when rigid ideas that we've had about how to do something can be, um, you know, people can, are, are more open to, to new ways of doing things. Um, they, they are more open to opportunities. And I actually think for women in particular, that in times of chaos, it, it, if, it, when we're in a situation where people are not accustomed to seeing women in certain roles and certain positions that suddenly it, people become more open to it because if what has been in the past hasn't been working and it's turned into a big mess then um then maybe there's an opportunity that we haven't seen before i'm curious as to um if anybody wants to unmute themselves and just share an example that you might have seen of someone taking chaos and turning it into getting people to think differently than they had been thinking before. Anybody want to offer a suggestion? Feel free. I, I'm in medicine. It's Ellen Rome. Um, it's a great disruptor for telehealth. Uh, oh, say more. Say more about that. Yes. We, we've always been, uh, you know, thou shalt not do telehealth. See them in the office. You're going to miss so much if you don't see them in the office. Now it's 95% keep everyone out of the office. And uh, unless you're desperate uh, or they're desperate um, and truly need to get seen, I think this is going to be a game changer for insurance companies covering distance medicine and telehealth, which could have great ramifications for mental health for uh, rural medicine, and for all of the underserved. Uh, if we can make, and also for completely changing the cost of healthcare, which is our biggest mm -hmm. uh, uh, expenditure and expected to keep going steeply increased mm -hmm. over the following decades. So if we, can, <laughs> if we can flatten that curve while we're flattening the, all the other curves, it's not all bad. That would be amazing. Uh, that is a, such a great, such, such a great example. And and just to even expand upon it a bit, the whole healthcare system in general. If anybody can't see why, I'm going to just say it straight out. If anybody can't see why we need a, a some kind of universal healthcare, 
um, why other countries have gone to universal health care systems of one kind or another. Um, this ought to be the time, and this should be the time when we can rethink the whole delivery of health care so that, so that all Americans can have better access. That was my, sorry, but I can't get off of that soapbox. It's so distressing to me to see that uh, the discrepancies in healthcare that some people are having. So, okay, I'll get off that soapbox right now. Um, others, any others, other uh, observations? You know, I, when I saw um, Macy's closing stores, I thought all of retail is going to be completely different. It's going to be completely rethought. We've been trending in that direction for a long time, but I think after this, it's going to be completely. And from Take the Lead's perspective, we have struggled a little bit with the fact that we've been a virtual organization from the beginning. We have no bricks and mortar. Well, guess what? We're the lucky ones now because we already knew how to do this, at least some of it. So feel free to keep putting those examples in the in the chat. Um, so I, I, I don't know. Um, I, I just wanted to say a quick word about um, this, this um, it's the, about take the lead and how it came to be and and the fact that I, I actually it happened because I wrote this book. I was trying to figure out why women hadn't reached parity in leadership in any sector. And, um, and, and the conclusion that I came to was about different socialization between men and, women and men around power and intention. So, um, so I, I, I then developed these nine leadership power tools. And in the process, what I found when I started looking at the differential uh, um, socialization around power and intention was that, wait a minute, actually, as women, we already had all the power that that we needed, we just didn't always know it. Um, that the fact that the business case is that if all it, companies that have more women in their leadership make more money, uh, governments that have more women in their leadership make better decisions, we have the power of the purse, we buy 85% of the consumer goods and products, we have the power of education, we've been earning almost two thirds of the college degrees for several decades now, and we have the power of justice which is simply that it's only the fair and right thing to do for everybody to have the opportunity to achieve to their highest potential. And if we were all, if we all had that equal opportunity, then surely we would have something closer to gender parity and more diversity in our, our upper leadership. So I, I give you that as background so that you know how I approach the whole issue of, of chaos and where the idea of the power tool Carpe the Chaos came from. Um, and, and recognizing that we have, we, there always is power even when we think we don't have power. And sometimes that's a hard thing to grasp, but um, that's just, just to give you what my, my mindset is and, and how it all hangs together for me. Um, and then I wanted you to know that, that Take the Lead's mission is nothing less than gender parity by 2025. And, uh, and you're welcome to explore if you're not already uh, on our website, uh, all the things that we can offer you. And we will be continuing to do these web chats every week on a topic that you all have told us are of interest to you where we can provide some help and assistance. So we're there. So as we launch into the, the ideas around Carpe the Chaos, um, let me give a quick overview of a couple of principles. I'm not gonna go through the whole power tool, but um, but I will just go through a couple of the principles and then I have a couple, there's some questions that have already come in. And, um, and, and if there are other questions that you have, put them into the chat and uh, we'll, be, we'll be taking them. The, the thing that, that I believe to be true is that getting outside of our comfort zone is generally where the magic happens. Uh, there really isn't a, there, there, there is an area of comfort, and right now, I think it's absolutely logical that we want to go to our area of comfort, and we need to, we need to stay there for a while. But it's outside of that where the magic actually happens, where we begin to see things in a different light, where those malleable boundaries let us open our minds to new ways of doing things and to, um, to innovate and to, to create and to develop 
programs to develop technologies that we wouldn't have otherwise been able to do. So there are five different um, tips in the Carpe the Chaos Power Tool, and I'm going to focus on just two of them, but happy to answer questions about any of them, but this is in the interest of time that I wanna just, just uh, start with a couple of them. Um, one of them is to see the potential. Uh, see the potential when the slate has been made clean, uh, just like seeing the potential for telemedicine. Uh, if it hadn't already started, if there hadn't already been people who had started doing some telemedicine, would we have seen that as a, as a thing that could happen now? It would have been much more difficult. So there's, um, there, when my, one of my daughters was three years old, she came to me very excited and said, I, I, I just drew a squirrel come with me, I want to show you the squirrel that I drew. She takes me into her bedroom and she has a big blackboard on the wall. And I see that she has drawn, you know how children will draw a tree trunk with two inverted like parentheses. And so there were these two inverted parentheses. She was three years old and there was a little round circle in the middle of it. So I said, Linda, that's great. Where's the, show me where the squirrel is. And she looked at me like I was like, what was wrong with me? And she pointed at that little hole in the little round thing in the tree. And she said, the squirrel is right inside of there. So, you know, as a three-year-old, she was able to see the potential. And as we, as we grow up and as we get older and as we kind of get more shaped and framed by our culture, we don't always see that potential. So, so the potential, um, the potential, frankly, one of the potentials I see right now is a surge in people helping people and people being kinder to people. Um, that's a super good thing. Just before we started out, uh, Christina was saying that, Christina's a photographer, in addition to being the uh, director of operations for Take the Lead here in Arizona, and she said she just shared that she was going she had offered in her neighborhood to to photograph families this weekend now you know that might have been something that might have happened otherwise but but i i i do see that times like these bring out both the good and the bad and there are so many people who are seeing the potential to actually help um See the potential for, um, it's like the clothing companies that are pivoting and making masks. That potential was always there, but whoever thought about it, whoever, whoever did it, the vacuum cleaner company, Dyson, that in 10 days designed a cheaper, more functional respirator. That wouldn't have happened but they were able to see the potential for doing something that would help someone else. So, so that's, that's on the positive side. Um, there, are, there are certainly negative potentials too. I know the, the crime rate is up in New York and things like that. So I don't want, to, I don't, what I don't wanna do is to just be like, oh, everything is great and you know, everything is gonna be fine and, and good will prevail. What will prevail is what we see the potential for in the aggregate of us and what we make happen. So um, the Ching says, before a great vision can become a reality, there may be great difficulty. Before a person begins a great endeavor, they may encounter chaos. As a new plant breaks the ground with great difficulty foreshadowing the huge tree, so must we sometimes push against difficulty in bringing forth our dreams. And um, have any of you experienced that? A time in your life when it was so difficult and you had to push against that difficulty to bring forth something new. Would anyone like to speak to that? You're welcome to unmute yourself and raise your hand and, and speak. 
Can you repeat open. that question? Is it to worry? Can you repeat the question? Yes, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the, the last line of this yes. slide. Uh, sometimes we must push against great difficulty in bringing forth our dreams. What if you're still in the difficulty and uh, just hoping that somehow it translates to dreams? Ah, uh, what? So, <laughs> but there is a dream, right? Yes, there is. <laughs> There's a dream. There's a dream. And um, I can't see who's speaking. Would Oops. you identify yourself? I will, but I, I'm not. Okay, here we go. Uh, it's Wari, if you can see me. I can't, but I... Well, it's because I'm not. People, that's uh, it's because I'm not. It's because I'm not seeing everybody. So that's yeah. that's that's fine. Yeah. So, so um, mm -hmm. I asked that question is this is a very powerful message. Um, taking take the lead. It's very powerful. It's a very heavy sentence, and I love it very much. Um, but sometimes when you are still in it, whatever mm -hmm. the struggle is. It's very hard to stay focused. The only thing that really keeps you going is that there is a dream, there is a vision, mm -hmm. and somehow you have to go through this sort of test of sorts to get mm -hmm. there. And so that's why I was asking that question. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Mm -hmm. What do you do? Um, so there are basically four things, four ways of dealing with anything, any challenge. And pretty much every technique will fit into one of these. There's fight. Mm -hmm. And that's when you, you've got your eye on that and you just like, you know, try to go full speed ahead no matter what. There's flight. There's thinking this can't be done. I'm, you know, I have to move away from it. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes stepping back and getting a different perspective is not a bad thing. Um, there's flank, which is, I'm going to find a way to go around the, the difficulties. I'm going to find a way to go around the obstacles that I'm facing and there's create a new paradigm. So it kind of depends on what the obstructions are for you mm -hmm. as to which one of you know what which one can be most functional for mm -hmm. you in that period of, in that particular time and not knowing you know not knowing what the dream is that's probably the most um that's kind of the best framework that i know of um you need all of those strategies at different times yeah. you need all, and uh i will give you an analogy to what i um what i found with with this, what I mentioned about the differential and socialization around power and intention between men and women is that, you know, throughout our, the narrative of history has been a narrative of fighting and wars and battles and scarce resources. And in truth, power is an infinite resource. The more, the more I help you, the more you help me, the more power we both have. But that's not how we've been trained. We've been trained that it's a finite pie and scarce is, their resources are scarce. And so, um, so, so I've, in my own mind and in my suggestion to, to women in general is to change how we're thinking about power from that negative power over paradigm to an expansive, open, generative, innovative power to the power to accomplish things, the power to make life better for yourself, your family, the world. And once we start talking about it like that, I, I begin to see masks fall off the faces and, and, and women that have been sort of like feeling like it's just too hard. I don't want to push against something, begin to see a new paradigm of thinking about it. And, and, and once you have thought about it differently, sometimes you can see different options for moving it forward. So that's my... That, that's that's my accidentally going going on to the next slide. I'm not very skilled at this, but um, so I, I I hope that's helpful. I don't know if it's helpful. It's, it's obviously, very, very, very helpful. Thank you. Uh, obviously, very. obviously, with more specificity, we could have you know we could we could talk further. And you're welcome to you're welcome to you know to email me or or something. And 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 if I can do more, I certainly will. Um, so the second principle that I wanted to share with you is take the lead. 
just uh, th and actually I love this slide and I used the slide because we just before all hell broke loose, <laughs> take the lead had a conference called the Power Up Conference, February 28th and 29th in Scottsdale. And um, I, true confessions here, I was so obsessed with having this conference on February 29th that despite the fact that we didn't get started and we didn't get funding until way late in the game and we only had just a couple of months to pull it together, I was like, we have to do this on leap day because leap day is the most feminist of days in the entire calendar. You know, it's the one day when, when, when thousands of years ago, it was decided that women could do things that had never been done before. They could break all the boundaries. They could ask a man to marry them. They could, they could take the lead. So this particular slide is of two female mayors in Arizona. Um, uh, Crystal, the one on the left is, uh, wait, Coral Evans. Sorry, I got that wrong. Coral Evans, uh, mayor of Flagstaff. And the person in the middle is Kate Gallego the mayor of Phoenix. And uh, we're pretty lucky in Arizona that several of the major cities have female mayors who are, who were way ahead, by the way, of any of our statewide public officials in, in knowing that we had to be doing social distancing, that we had to be um, self-quarantining if we had come into contact with, with the virus and, and that sort of thing. And they were way ahead and they took action and they took the lead. And that's why I wanted to show you this slide. The person on the far right in this slide is Megan Finnerty, who took the lead when she 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 is a she's a, an accomplished storyteller and she teaches storytelling. And um, she is still a reporter for the Arizona newspaper, the Arizona Republic. And but she took the lead in Gannett, which owns the Arizona Republic she took the lead and started a whole nationwide storytelling project. In fact, it's called the Storytellers Project. And if you get a chance, you should, um, you should check into it. Uh, they, she, she was planning to do uh, a series of in-person storytelling um, programs all over the country and, and had to pivot immediately to making them all virtual. So they are findable on YouTube, the Storytellers Project, I highly recommend, and there will be more of them. So. That's why I wanted to show you the slide. It's like sometimes it's about just stepping out and 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 doing something. Um, doing. I, I used to have a board member who would say, "Do something, even if it's wrong. Just take some kind of action." I wouldn't go that far, but take the lead because 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 the world is always looking for people who will step out and take a stand and start something moving forward. So I want to stop there um, because there's a lot more that I could talk about, about this concept of carpe the chaos. Um, and, and I kind of like the humor of mangling languages together and mushing languages together. Um, so forgive that if you're, if you're a, um, a purist on that. But I want to just quickly take a couple of questions that have come in and then ask if there are any others in the chat. Um, one of the questions is, ooh, how do we get youth to take a, to vote in November? How? In capital letters. Woo! Um, so that's a big question. And it's a great question because um, young people, and I'm going to make that, I'm going to say that I'm talking about maybe people under Maybe we're talking about people under the age of 30. I'm not sure exactly what we're calling young, but, but young people have always been the energy, the drive behind social change, and yet the lowest percentage of voters. And how? So now is really an opportunity in a way to, to engage people of all ages in the democratic process and in the electoral process. Now is actually a great time because now is a time when maybe we have an extra five minutes to make a phone call and encourage somebody to make sure that they are registered to vote, to make sure that they know uh, what the rules are in their states 
because we're seeing a lot of voter suppression and it will always be the most vulnerable people who who are least likely to be able to exercise their right to vote in that situation like you probably saw the the pictures of the Wisconsin voter who who had to stand outside and and socially distance as they could to try to cast their votes and what had been 150 polling places got reduced to 15 polling places well then this is the time perhaps to make sure that people know that they can do early voting, that people know that they can do voting by mail, that people know what the rules are in their state. That, can, that is best done on a person-to-person -person basis, starting with your own family, starting with your own friends. And um, I have one more thing that I will say, and that is uh, we, we who have been through many ups and downs, and we who know that there are cycles in politics, can really help, I think, young people understand that it doesn't serve us well to be cynical. It doesn't serve us well to be bitter about losing, you know, if our candidate didn't win, it doesn't serve us well to have those emotions, even though we may feel them, um, that it's, we need to stay in the game. We need to make sure that we do vote, that we do pay attention, that we do realize what impact it has on ourselves. So person to person, postcards um, in our apartment complex, in, in my apartment complex, um, there is a group of people that, that it, they call themselves optimists resist. And um, this, um, this is not a partisan statement. You could do this regardless of what your party is, but they started as just a very few people in this apartment complex. And then they started inviting other people. And now they, they have several hundred people on their mailing list and they, you know, they have, have um, postcard campaigns. I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll have people get together or people they'll know that now that we can't get together, they were, I saw um, <clears throat> one of the leaders out, out in our, um, outside the other day, and she was, she had packets of postcards that were getting delivered, just dropped at the door fronts of, of people in the organization. So democracy is not an easy thing. It is, it is not a spectator sport. It is like constant everyday engagement. I don't know if that's the message you wanted to have, but that's my answer. Um, I wanted to take Lisa Marie's question here. Um, I visualize myself as the editor of a free local women's magazine, and I'm in the process of relaunching a previous publication that gives, uh, uh, that gives women writers authors and photographers, opportunities and highlights women business owners. Started in January, registered new name and business, first issue nearly complete, but needs advertisers. Getting great feedback, but despite much social networking in the current situation, sales are at a standstill. Looking for advice. Thank you. Whew, that is a, that is a, a difficult one. Um, and I hope that everybody who's on will feel the opportunity to post something in the chat if you have some specific suggestions for Lisa Marie. Timing, as they say, is sometimes everything. And I, it seems to me that there is a choice to be made here of um, stepping back and waiting a few months to get started. But my personal instinct, and this is just an instinct, so take it for what it's worth, it's, you know, it's just a, my personal instinct is if you can hang in there and deliver something that's really high quality and keep gathering people who are reading it and keep gathering those, that good feedback that you document in several months when things begin to be a little different, you will have exactly what you need to go to potential advertisers and be able to tell them how many eyes will look at their ad will be able to, as they will be trying to recover from the consequences of this pandemic if you can if that is a possibility for you that would be my instinct um, the reason that that we at take the lead are are um, increasing our free services to people is exactly for that same reason. 
we know that there will be a number of our funders who won't be able to help us out in the next six months or maybe this year. I mean, we know that. Um, we were about to start gathering sponsors for our next Power Up conference. Well, I'm telling you, the day we finished that conference, we were about to be out asking, you know, businesses and those who had said they were interested but couldn't do it on such short notice. We were about to go to them and say, okay, we're going to, we have all these people who said they love this conference. We're going to do it again next year. Well, guess what? Understandably, their resources are mostly going to, um, to COVID-related services for people. And so we've had to take a step back. We've had to postpone some of the major programs that we had intended to start. We wanted to do a 50 Women in Law, uh, Can Change the World in Law, launching in May. We wanted to do, uh, we had it on the calendar. We had it all on the docket. It was going to happen. It's not going to happen in May. It's not going to happen in May. But we're, we're still working toward finding another way to get it launched this fall. So we're pivoting to entirely online for a while. Uh, our, our cohort two of 50 women in journalism will start virtually and we will hope that by fall we'll be able to do something in person, but we're not going to be, we're, we're going to go ahead with that one. Um, but since we can't get sponsors for the others, we will be postponing those. So. I don't know if that is, is uh, you know, to me, I see those two choices. One is to step back and wait, and the other that I would think would be more feasible if you are able to do it, and I understand that it may not be financially feasible for you, Lisa Marie, is to, is to keep a mass, keep putting out good content and keep track of all the positive comments that you get and make sure that you're doing a lot of social media and that you're getting it out to as many people as possible so that you build your subscriber list. And then when the moment is right, you'll be able to go to, mm -hmm. you'll be able to go to potential advertisers armed with that data and you'll have better luck. I hope that's helpful. You're welcome to, you're welcome to share whether it is or not. Oh, and, hi, I um, think I'm unmuted. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay, yes, great. I can hear you. Yes. yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what I um what I have in my mind. Um, you know, um this was starting out as actually a relaunch of a previously published magazine, and I was fortunate enough to um um have a mentor that that basically gave me the publication, which I changed up the name and and whatnot. But mm -hmm. yeah, I um, starting out, it was I, I wasn't getting much feedback to begin with because the publication hadn't been in print for a while. But and then this hit, so um, yeah, the pub the the premier publication date has been moved three times now. So hopefully, you know I'm. I'm hoping for summer, but I, I don't know that that's going to happen, uh, possibly fall. Um, and financially, yeah, we, um, um, we're living on my husband's income right now. So um, we ended up, um, we are in the middle of um, getting a home equity loan to kind of get us through and, and to help um, finance. So mm -hmm. yeah, had to... Mm -hmm you know, had to adapt. Right. Well, I just, I think if you can, if you, if you've know, you've seen that you're filling a need for people, you've right. seen that you're getting positive feedback to so try to keep building those lists. Try, even if you even if you could just put out one blog, good blog post a week and keep building your following and keep building your list, right. you will be in a, you will be in a much better position when, when we come out of this. And right. uh, so well, I will, I, I will say one of the things that I um, decided to do um, was, um, you know, I had figured out the, basically the um, pricing for the ads, you know, quarter ad, half page ad, full page ad, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and decided to do, um, I'm now offering <laughs> um, summer, uh, a summer, uh, summer special pricing which will probably go through the end of the year, which basically mm -hmm. means profit will be almost nothing. But I'm willing to, um, with, the, with the loan that we're going to be able to get, I'm willing to, you know, use, the, use that pricing through the end of the year just to get going. So mm -hmm. hopefully, 
you know, fingers crossed. Well, good luck. Good luck. Yeah. I, I hope that that will happen. And, and there's one other thing that I will just mention is sometimes in times like these, um, finding a collaboration can be helpful as well. If there's, right. if there's, if there's some other vehicle that you could collaborate with, even on a short, short term period. So thank you. And thank you for that question and really good luck to you. Yes, Good thank luck. you so much for addressing thank it. Thank you. Because, because I know how much we need that local journalism. It's really important, super important. Thank so, you. Yes. Um, Christina, do we have some other questions? I don't have any questions right now. Um, okay. I will just, I will proceed then. Great. Although I, I will, will proceed. Jennifer Lowry uh, said, please let us know what it's called and I will purchase it and spread the word. I think that was to you. Oh, all right. So see, there's another, there's another potential option there, Lisa Marie, because you're in Lincoln, but the person who made that offer is in Arizona. So maybe you let people far beyond your boundaries know what, uh, what you're doing and they might want to support you. You never know. You never know. That's actually the great thing about social media, right? So, um, Carpe the Chaos, Carpe the Chaos. Um, I, I, I hope that you, you have taken at least some um, tips and some concrete tips and some inspiration, perhaps. Um, now you also know that there are a number of people here who share your concerns and i'm sure that is true wherever you may be we need each other more than ever we are we are in this together we are um we 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 need to reach out we need to um we need to find each other and find our support systems i started a, a facebook page a couple of years ago when i was starting to write a family history cookbook. And I decided I wanted to try to gather recipes from, from the family. And at the time I had about 10 family members who I was Facebook friends with, so I invited them. And before I knew it, they started inviting other family members. And sometimes it's like cousins I've never even met or people in the family that I've never even met. And we've got about 90 people on that Facebook page now. I still haven't finished that cookbook. But, uh, but at the same time, what, what I have is when I was, you know, I, I had a place where I could go to say to 90 people in my extended family all at one time, how are you? How are you doing? Check in, let us know how you are, what's needed, how can we help you? And, and so I'm not telling everybody to start a family Facebook page, a Facebook group, but it was a serendipitous thing that, that I had done without even realizing that it would provide that kind of, of opportunity for, for far-flung people to be able to be in communication with each other and to uh, provide help and support. And the, so uh, one of the reasons that I forgot that this was for, uh, for people who do, um, Jewish people who do celebrate two nights of, the first two nights of, of Passover is that um, my extended family on our, our family, well, we call it the large and interesting family. That's another story for another day. But, uh, but, but we're having a virtual Seder on Saturday. So we don't even know who's going to show up, but, um, but it should be fun. We need each other. We are in this together. Hashtag in this together is a very good one for us to have right now. Um, let's not let ourselves get isolated. Uh, reach out. Uh, make sure. Um, I... I personally try to make one or two phone calls every day to people that I haven't talked to in a long time. Nobody just picks up the phone anymore without making an appointment for a phone call. And I have found that if I just call people randomly, it shocks them in a very good way. And it makes me feel more connected to the world. And at my lowest point, it, it gives me a lot of uh, feeling of connection and courage. So that's just my own little personal thing that I do to carpe the chaos. Um, one of my favorite all-time quotes is, it's usually attributed to Winston Churchill, who apparently did not say this. I don't know who did say it. Victory is not final. Defeat is not fatal. It's the courage to continue that counts. And the way forward is ours for the making. 
And I wish for each of us here um, the way forward and that we make the way forward in a way that will be um, positive and that we will come out on the other side of this portal uh, with having, having made the world a better place uh, as a result of the difficulties that we're going through right now. So I wanna hold some space right now if anybody has any further questions or things that you'd like to share before we conclude. I have a quick question, Gloria. I'd like sure. to know, sorry, I'd like to know what your, uh, what, how you would describe, or how would you, how you would, well, what your definition of resilience is. Mm -hmm. I say this because everything you say, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just so excited to be here, but I want to hear your thoughts on that word uh, it, as it relates to women. What are your thoughts on that word? Resilience. Oh, um, well, I guess, you know, the first thing I think of is the, the ability to bounce back, obviously, uh, but which I guess might be the dictionary definition. I don't know. But for me, for myself, I had to recognize that each time I did find a way to bounce back from what seemed like a big setback, I grew my capacity to do that. And <clears throat> actually I began to almost need bigger and bigger challenges, which might not be a healthy thing, I'm not sure. But resilience does not mean not being worried. It does not mean not recognizing the challenge. I think it doesn't mean having to bear the burden for everybody. I think it doesn't mean um, that we're always all buttoned up and got it all together. I think resilience to me would mean more staying in there for the long term and being being um, and, and learning from it each time and growing the courage muscles from it each time. Does that make sense? That was brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Whoa, thank you. <laughs> well, it, it fits very nicely with your last slide. It just almost seemed to fit. So uh, I, I'm grateful for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for showing up today. Again, this is where you can uh, communicate and share and connect and collaborate with Take the Lead at any time. Um, to uh, here's This is my um, social media. I, I, I'm Gloria Felt everywhere because otherwise I'd forget what I said I was, uh, my handle. I never tried to come up with some cute handle. Just got to be Gloria Felt. And uh, <clears throat> there's my email address. I am happy to hear from anybody, anytime. I am extremely grateful to everyone who took an hour of your time today to show up. I would love to get feedback from you. Um, we really want to know what other web chats and webinars and, and services of this kind we can provide that would help you through these difficult days and on to better ones. So thank you most kindly. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you all. So great to see everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe I can see more people this way. You know, it's so nice. We've never we've never done one with this many people on the screen before. So this is an experiment. <laughs> Good. We're gonna have like one of those big TVs so you can cast everybody. Yeah, right. So you can see everybody well. Yes, right. Okay. Hey cat. Hi there. <laughs> How are you doing? You're muted. Unmute. There I am. Yeah, there um, you are. 
I was, I confess I was weepy today. Oh. I felt sad about everything. Yeah. Um, super struck by what children in particular are experiencing of this mm -hmm. changed world. Mm -hmm. um, you can really relate to that. Um, I, as I, 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 those of you who know my habits know that my <clears throat> remedy for almost everything is exercise. So I was out walking, <laughs> since walking is about the only thing I can do now. Uh, and I was, I was uh, kind of thinking about the fact that for my grandsons, their first memory will be of 9-11. Yeah. And it's bookended as they get into their 20s with this. Yeah. It just <laughs> freaks me out. I hate to think about that. Yeah. And I really, uh, I mean, my kids are now 24 and 22, so they, they, it's the same had, thing. Mm -hmm. they had the optimism mm -hmm. launching into their lives and to have this be the, such a significant marker, I, um, I really hope that they don't become cynical and mm -hmm. depressed about it. It's, and you know, I, I go back and forth speaking of leadership about whether it's okay just to be vulnerable and like cry in front of my staff or to be not doing that. And mm -hmm. yeah. Where do you come down? Where, what's your conclusion? Um, I try to be upbeat and then I call my friends to cry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can relate to that. Yeah. I can totally um, relate. But sometimes it sneaks up on you, right? Yeah, yeah. Every once in a while, I think it's not a bad thing. Yeah. Everybody needs to know it's, we're all human, right? Were yeah. you raising your hand, Lisa, over there? <laughs> unmute, if you unmute yourself. <laughs> no, she's not going to do it. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, me. Yeah, I, I, um, I yelled at my husband today. I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I confess. <laughs> it was like over the top. <laughs> well, we all need we all need a safe space to let it out, right? Yeah, yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I applaud yeah. for keeping um keeping the group together to provide some kind of optimistic vision points. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, and I think it's really cool that the journalism cohort is is getting together um, periodically for for conference calls and mutual or zooms and mutual support. That's yeah. Super, super important. Yeah. Super no, important. There's, there's a lot of um, a lot of stress about just being consumed by the story itself, mm -hmm. as well as whatever is going on personally. Right. And um, and exactly what you were talking about today is that there's things that can emerge out of this that we hadn't thought of before. Right. Yeah, we, we don't know what's birthing. Something is birthing. Yeah. We don't know.